Hi, everyone. Good evening. So glad you're here. Come on into our Facebook Live. This is going to be a fun one tonight. You know, season's eatings. Here we are, the week of Thanksgiving. So uh, Bob and I started talking the other day about holiday traditions. We got on that topic. And then last night I was up to way till too late preparing for a Thanksgiving Day tradition. We'll get into that in just a moment. But there's some of us that may be cooking due to circumstances this year and maybe having to do the whole meal because we're keeping our family gatherings smaller. So we brought in the best to answer your questions. Chef Jeff Jackson from Smith's Food and Drug is here. Good friend of Fox 13, Jeff. You've been doing cooking segments on Good Day Utah and the place for years now. So it's, yeah. it's great to see you virtually. Not yeah, inside the kitchen. I, well, I'd, I'd rather be inside the kitchen, but this is fine too. But yeah, it's been, I think, almost two and a half, three years that I've been with you guys. So it's been a good relationship. I enjoy it. Yes. And you've got an answer for everything when it comes to cooking. So ask your questions, your cooking questions, recipe questions, whatever it may be in the comments. And then also, if you want to start um, putting in some of your Thanksgiving Day traditions, family traditions, we'll do a, a tradition share change. So Bob? Are you ready to go? I am ready to go, Kelly. And in fact, uh, I, I'm starved right now. And, uh, and so this is a great topic to be talking about because I will be thinking about anything I can think about about food. Yes. So, Let me uh, get those taste buds working a little bit more because Clifton Dukes asks us, if you have to choose pecan or pumpkin pie, and I say pecan, do you say pecan or pecan? Can I choose both? Choose <laughs> both. Um, or maybe the third choice should be whipped cream. <laughs> yeah. Or ice cream, please. Mm. I love a good traditional pumpkin pie. Me too. I could go either way, but I'd have to say pumpkin would be my favorite for sure. Well, which one is easier to make? Boy, that's a good question. You know, pumpkin pies are probably easier. They just, there's a lot of great recipes out there, but. Um, I am horrible at making pie crust, so I, I go for the just the pre-made pie crust, super simple, and they they usually always work really well. Semi-homemade dishes, Semi -home I'm all for those. Yeah, me too. I'm all about that. So, yeah, pumpkin's gonna be easier, but that's not to say that pecan pie is not approachable because it is. It's super easy and delicious too. So. Yeah, we're starting with desserts here, guys. But let's go to the main course. Dave Hauser, we're getting so many viewers here uh, asking questions, so keep them coming. Dave Hauser says, is the turkey okay in a cooler in brine and ice for a couple of days? So we're yes. talking like two or three days. Is that okay, Jeff? Yeah, I, I'd say so. Um, just as long as it's cold, that's really the only important thing is just keeping it below 41 degrees. That's the, the temperature you want to keep things below. Anything above that, you you risk the 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 foodborne illness the dangers but as long as it's kept cold you, you should be good and um, I would say probably not more than two or three days because at that point it's gonna that salt's really gonna get in there and make your bird maybe a little too salty but but I think one to two days is probably a really good a good thing for Brian if you're just joining us here on uh, turkey talk talking turkey <laughs> It's not Town Hall Tuesday, it's talking turkey. We like teas. Um, we're taking your comments, your questions for Chef Jeff Jackson from Smith's Food and Drug. And uh, he's a great friend of Fox 13. Peterson Allen asks, how long does it take to thaw a 16.43 pound turkey? That is a great question. And I don't have my calculator in front of me, but you know what? Um, I would say, uh, a 16 pound turkey, there's a couple of ways to defrost it. Now, the first one I'm going to explain, it might be too late for that. I'm going to explain it anyways, and that is just in your fridge. Um, a refrigerated thawing takes probably, I would say, four to six days, so we might be past that. Um, so if you haven't got your turkeys in your fridge yet, um, you may need to go with this second option. And it can be done in probably six to eight hours, and that's in cold water. Um, if you put your turkey uh, you could put it in a large pot. Keep the keep the plastic on it. Um, you could put it in a large pot. You could put it in your cooler. Just uh, and you're gonna add cold water to it, and then just let the make sure it's completely submerged. And I would say change the water probably every hour to two hours because you don't want the again that 41 degree range is is important. So you just want to keep replacing the water to keep it cold. 
And if you do that with a 16 pound turkey, you should be good in about six to eight hours. Um, if you put the turkey in water the night before, say tomorrow night, and just keep it in your fridge, um, by the time you get up Thursday morning, it should be pretty well thawed. Why so, cold water and not hot water? Um, so it's all about the, the uh, in, in cooking school, it's a time temperature danger zone. that You don't want your turkey to be in the range of 41 to like 70 something degrees for more than a few hours. That's when all the little bacteria starts to grow. So you, you, thawing is a tricky process. You need to do it slow and you have to be patient, um, but it can be done quickly. So you just, it's just all about keeping yourself healthy and not getting food for illnesses. But you know, they've improved the taste of bacteria over the years. Yeah, I've heard that. Um, I don't know which ones you like best. I, I don't know as far as bacteria go. Mm, <laughs> salmonella. Ooh, uh, my well, yeah, uh, yeah, salmonella would be the one. It's like, the yeah. last thing we need. Mm -hmm. Okay, Earl. Earl Halton, what's going on with you? He's asking, how long will it take to microwave my turkey? Wow. Read the back, read the back of the TV dinner box and it will yeah, tell you. Say, <laughs> Earl, I don't recommend funny. that, Earl, but if you're going to, it, I'd say 30 to 40 minutes. I, would, I don't even know. Yeah. I'm not even going to go there because I don't know. That's one experiment you have not yet tried in the kitchen, microwaving a turkey. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Amanda is asking, uh, Amanda Diet. she says, what is the best way to cook a turkey? And I think that, Amanda, depends on maybe tradition and what kind of flavor you're going for, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to fry their turkey. Yeah. Frying is an excellent way to go. We've done that before. Um, it, it turns out a crispy and juicy turkey. But probably the most important thing when you're going to cook a turkey, and I have to stress this, and that is this thing right here. You need to get one um, or one of these, whatever. You need a digital thermometer. Um, nobody likes a dry turkey, and I would say that's going to be the key to a juicy turkey and a delicious turkey um, is just not overcooking. It's simple as that. Um, use your thermometer. And what I do is I set mine to, to 155. Um, a turkey uh, is done at 165 if you put the thermometer in the thickest part of the meat. And uh, so what happens is once you take the turkey out of the oven or the fryer or, or the smoker, or whatever, whatever means you use, um, take it out at 155. And as it rests, which you want to do after it comes out, cover it in some foil and let it rest for about a half hour before cutting into it. And during that time, it's going to creep up to 165 on its own. So... And that's what the, the goal we're looking for. So 155, use a thermometer. And any method, make sure to use a lot of salt, use your butter, uh, lemons, all those things, and, and you're going to have a delicious turkey. Just watch that temperature. Okay, the temperature is the key that's here. The key. Because, Jeff, I'm always so concerned that I'm not going to cook the turkey long enough and it's still going to be raw. And I think what I do then is I overcook it and it it's dry. Yeah. Yep, have that thermometer um, and set it to, to 155 if you have one of those that you can set. And I'd say you could get an average turkey done in a 400, 350 to 400 degree oven in about two and a half, three hours at the most. What's an average turkey? 10 pounds? I would say 13 to 20 pounds, something like that. No, <laughs> especially this year, for some reason, all the turkeys are huge. I don't know why. Are they bigger this year? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't. I've been looking for smaller turkeys and haven't been able to find them. They're all huge, but don't there's be some sort They're of an average yeah. turkey. Yeah. There's some sort of formula, though, isn't it? X amount of minutes per pound. Do you know that pound, off the yeah. top of your head? And you know what? I, that's hard to say because that all depends on how thawed or not frozen your turkey is. And and you know what? Another important thing is to let your room, your turkey sit for probably about an hour before putting it in, in the oven. The closer it is to room temperature when you put it in, the, the crispier the skin's going to get, the quicker it's going to cook. Um, so it's hard to say, but I would say between two and three hours, you should be able to get most turkeys finished in that time period. Now, what about a frying turkeys? Because um, I had a fried turkey down at our son's place uh, in California, but I guess two years ago or uh -huh. something like that. And oh my goodness! Yeah. I don't want to ever go back. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, true. do a a baked or cooked turkey, you know? Yeah, no, fried is awesome. We've we've had it a few times, and it, it, having the right equipment is probably the best thing for that. To have a fryer that's specifically made for turkeys is probably the best way to go. But fried turkeys are done in about forty five minutes, so they're quick. 
Okay, so, so if yeah. you had to choose between the regular baked turkey, uh, turkey and a fried turkey, which would you choose? I would go Jeff? fried, but you know what? I'm going to put mine in my smoker this year. So uh, there's another method that you can try if you've got a, a Traeger or whatever kind of smoker. Get it out there in the smoker. Ha! Huh. What flavor smoke are you going to do? Um, I have a mix. I think it's mesquite and apple. It's, it's the American mix, it's called. It's mesquite, apple, and I think cherry or something, but. Um, That'll be it, good, Jeff. Yeah, it will be good. I heard the best oil to use if you have a turkey fryer is peanut oil. Correct, yes. And, and Why so is that? that? That's a good question. So um, you want an oil that can withstand, uh, you need an oil that has a high smoke point for one thing, meaning that it can withstand high temperatures for a long period of time before it burns. So oils like olive oil wouldn't work uh, because it would just burn and, and go rancid. But peanut oil that has a high smoke point, plus it, plus it adds a lot of uh, distinct flavor that other oils wouldn't add. So, um. Amanda Diet, I think is her name. Tell people the risks of fried turkeys. Is it true that that is a dangerous option if the turkey is frozen? That is absolutely right. Make sure your turkey is completely thawed and probably best at room temperature and dry it off because water and oil don't mix. And if you drop that turkey into hot oil and your turkey is either frozen or wet, then that, that oil is going to explode and be a big mess. Um, one, one trick with frying turkeys, if you're just going to do it in a pot, put the turkey in the pot before you put any oil in it. Dump the, the oil on top. That way you know how much oil you're going to need to cover the turkey rather than just guessing. Um, that way, uh, you're less likely to, to overboil it and, and burn your garage down or some horrible thing like that. Well, and I think it's important to point out that it, when you fry a turkey, you don't do it indoors. No, no. You, you do it as far away from the house as you can reasonably get. Yeah, that's good advice for sure. And put something underneath the, the turkey fryer. Be careful what you choose and it's not in, you know, any of the, the heating coils or whatever. But oftentimes grease will spill out the oil sure. and it can stain. I know because my brother-in-law did it once and it stained our back patio. We really couldn't get it off. So just a little tip. Um, Nothing flammable. You know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that is dangerous. Hey, do we still use that 155 temperature point yeah. when we fry a turkey? Yep. So remember the goal is 165, but most your turkey's always going to continue to cook once it's taken out of whatever heat source. So out of the oil at 155, out of the oven at 155, out of the smoker at 155. And that's with your thermometer in the thickest part of the breast, not, not like in the leg or anything like that. Okay, and if it's not at that, that temperature, put it back in with yep. the fryer oven for a little bit longer. Correct. Okay, all right. Um, Jenny Suppinger is on to something that, Bob, I think this is what you were saying your wife does, right? She says, cooking your turkey upside down, heard it's amazing. So that means typically you put in the turkey and, and the breast and the round part is up, right, in mm -hmm. your pan. So turning it completely upside down. Yeah. So Why is that? I, I guess I, I could think just thinking logically about it. Um, so as a cook, a turkey cooks, the juices are going to kind of run down because of gravity. And so if your breast is on the bottom, maybe the, the, the juices can gather there. The only downside to that would be that you're, everybody loves in my family, the crispy skin that gets on top. In fact, we fight over it. And you wouldn't get that if you had the, the breast upside down. If it's up, then it's going to get brown and crispy. But I, I can see the benefits of the juices that would gather there, which is, which is good. Yeah, I can attest that they're, they, it's really succulent and very good, very good. Now, um, talk about the gravy. I mean, some people like to make the gravy out of the drippings of the turkey. How do you do that best? Okay, so gravy, the, the best advice I could give you on that is if you're going to cook it in a, a roasting pan, um, use um, celery and carrot and onion as your as your oven rack or your turkey rack to set it on rather than a rack. Um, and then that way you're flavoring your your drippings. And then with the with all the carrot and uh, that just adds such great flavor to the, the gravy. And then, of course, once you're done with the, and taking the turkey out, go ahead and strain all of those juices out and you'll be left with just the awesome base for your gravy. Add a little bit of chicken stock if you need to and thicken it up with some, I go chicken or cornstarch rather than flour in my house, but 
Um, uh, adding flavor with the, the celery, carrot, and onion makes a huge difference. Mm, my Thanksgiving plate, I always put gravy over everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything gets gravy on the gravy top. Gravy and cranberry sauce for me. Cranberry, oh, I love it. Cranberry sauce on my stuffing. I love that. It's one of my favorite mm, things. Uh, the stuffing may mm -hmm. be my favorite, though. Mm -hmm. There's been some debate, Jeff, on whether you cook your stuffing inside your bird or you do it Don't separately do it. on a stove Don't top. Do it. Okay. So tell us the pros and cons of each method. I can't really think of a pro. Um, okay, so with the, with the stuffing inside the bird, um, you run into a problem where um, the stuffing may finish before the bird does as far as, because stuffing is going to be the same thing. You want it to reach 165 as well. So it may reach that temp before the bird is done, and then you'll be left with overcooked stuffing or vice versa. The turkey will finish before the stuffing does. And so you're left with a perfect turkey and an undercooked stuffing. Um, I, I don't think it would really add much flavor to it. I would say just don't do it. I, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who've done it that way uh, for years and years and years. Um, and it probably works out. But I would say for the average cook, I would say do your stuffing separate. That way you can cook it to the right temperature and it's done and your turkey. We, do, we just want to not get people sick. So. Um, Jeff, talk to us a little bit about how you decide how big a bird you need. I mean, a few minutes ago, we were talking about how most of the birds this year seem to be pretty big, but how do you gauge how much bird you need? You know what? I actually heard a thing where it's about a pound of turkey. Not Now, this is whole turkey, including bone, skin, everything. One pound per person. So if you've got 10 people, a 10 pound, per, 10 pound turkey should do it. Um, one to one and a half pounds per person, I would say, of whole turkey, not just meat. So that includes bones and skins and all that stuff. So. Okay. There were a couple comments, people saying when they season their turkey and get it ready to pop into the oven, um, people put beer inside of it and, of course, different spices. And then Ellen's asking, well, how much beer? One regular can? I've heard that before. Does it just give it a specific taste or or why just do enough just beer? enough to get the turkey drunk yeah. so you can yeah. catch him that's all yeah uh, a drunk turkey is much easier to deal with than a not drunk turkey right it's happier seriously though have you ever heard of that like a beer uh, can turkey? well i've heard the beer can chicken a lot and the, the reason that works is because you can set a chicken up like literally sit it up on top of the the can and then it will steam and the flavors will get inside the bird but um you'd have to have a pretty big can to, to set a turkey on top of it but I'm sure you could the same principle would apply if you added rather than chicken broth to your to your pan like I said chicken broth before for the gravy maybe you do a little bit of of beer and that would do the same thing just add different flavor than the chicken sauce would um, just depends on the flavor you're after I guess but the same way would apply and if Thanksgiving wasn't your favorite meal before it sure will be after so <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey kids, turkey's ready. <laughs> kids are all smiling. Anyway. The alcohol burns off. Oh yes, it does. That's what they say. <laughs> Not all the way I've heard. Don Buckley puts uh, apple cider in his turkey there on the smoker. Yeah, that's a good idea. All of these things are all gonna just make your turkey better. Um, just so you, I'm going to, I'm going to go, get back to it again. 155, 155. I you like do that seeing, and you're good. I like seeing everyone's uh, different ways that they, yeah. they do their turkey. They're all great. There's no right or wrong, right? No, a recipe, you can customize it to your own taste and your family taste. But what would you say, Jeff, if there is one thing that you would recommend people do, like an important key step or something they don't want to miss when preparing their Thanksgiving feast? Is there anything that really pops out? Uh, Martha Stewart once said that you should always, 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 no matter what you put in your turkey or the seasoning you put on it or around it, you need to smear it, like cover it in butter. Just cover that turkey, the whole thing, slather it up. Yeah, that's what I would do. And I, I love turkey, but I would say that's too general of a, of a question for all the different recipes and tradition. I think just, just know who your family is and what they like and, and just make it the way they like it. I mean, that's what it comes down to is that everybody's happy and having a good time. It's fun to try new things every now and then, but just so everybody's happy, 
that's what I would say. It's hard to go wrong with butter and salt. No, you can't. You can't go wrong. Plenty of both. And, you're gonna and garlic. Don't prepared. forget the garlic. Ah, yes. And if there's not enough butter on that turkey, then slather the, the buns up with butter or the mashed potatoes mm -hmm. with butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. Yeah, you don't count calories on Thanksgiving, right? No. no, no, no well, Thanksgiving that. calories don't count anyway. So. That's right. Well, the whole season calories don't count. <laughs> I really do enjoy all the foods of Thanksgiving, you know, any sort of potato and, uh, of course, the turkey. I think the stuffing, as I mentioned, the stuffing may be my favorite. My least favorite, we got to go on the opposite end. I've never really cared much for green bean casserole. Hmm. You guys? I love it. I love it too. You know what? Switch the green beans out for Brussels sprouts. Oh, I that sounds Brussels even worse. No, no, it's so good. Oh, no, really? yeah. There you go, Deb. Somebody's asking, right there. Somebody's yeah, asking there I'm trying go. to find her name. She was asking how you make the homemade um, fried onions to put on top. Oh, you know what? Sorry, I can't oh. find her name. Oh, yeah, that was early up. I did that on the place actually. I don't know if they've did aired you? that yet. Oh, yeah. Mary Lou. Oh my gosh, Mary Lou. Good friend of the show. How do you make onion rings for the green bean casserole to top it with? Yeah, so that's a good question. So yeah, I actually did a the that I did a segment. I'm not sure whether it's aired or not yet, but on how to do that in, in case you don't can't find them at the store. Plus they're so much better. So the key to it is um chopping your onions really thin. Um I'd use shallots even instead of onions because they're a little sweeter and they're smaller but make sure to slice them thin and then soak them in buttermilk for about 15 minutes, half an hour beforehand. And then just have a flour dredge to put them in, uh, season your flour with salt and pepper, uh, maybe a little cayenne pepper if you like them spicy, um, just whatever seasoning you'd like to have in your breading. And then uh, just have some hot oil waiting and take them from buttermilk to flour and then into hot oil and they'll cook in like, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, maybe a minute and a half, just until they're brown. And then uh, just let them drain the, drain the oil on paper towels and then they're ready to throw on a, a green bean casserole. It's really fast and super worth it. Um, but I definitely would recommend that for sure. I bet Mary Lou, if you go to our website, fox13now.com and click on the place tab, all of your segments are usually up there. So people yeah. can find that, that actual recipe segment of you doing that. Yep, yep, that was a good one. Yeah, in fact, it's on the uh, the comments oh, yeah, section right now. There's a link right there that Mary put up. Um, let's talk real quickly about traditions, Thanksgiving Day traditions, when you gather around the table. Uh, Jeff, what traditions do you do at your house? Okay, well, it depends on which family we're eating with. So we split holidays with my my wife's family and then my family. This, this year, we're with my wife's family. When we're with my family... Um, we actually get up and say the Pledge of Allegiance before the, the meal, which is kind of fun. And then, and then everybody goes around. And this is, this is the part I hate because the food's just waiting. And we usually have like 20 people and we go around the table and everybody says what they're thankful for. And I'm just waiting. I'm like, okay, hurry it up. Come on. And everybody's got to go into some long spiel about what they're thankful for, which is good because I'm really grateful for a lot of things. But, but that, that's some of the fun things we do. And then... Um, and different games we play. We play different games at my wife's family um, that are traditions. Uh, there's a spoon game with with uh, oven mitts on your hands while you try to unwrap a present, things like that. But um, yeah, a lot of fun. It just depends on what family we're sharing Thanksgiving with. Kelly's got a great tradition. She's starting this year. <laughs> This is really easy, too, and I think it's really fun, especially since a lot of people are changing their traditional Thanksgiving plans this year because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. It's just myself and my husband and my three kids, and we're doing Thanksgiving Day bingo. And like you said, Jeff, a lot of families play different games and have different rules. So the way we're going to do it, and you can do this really easy, any budget. You know, don't put yourself in debt. You should never put yourself in debt to celebrate a holiday, right? It doesn't take much. But we have a bingo set, and I went and got all these little prizes. And some of them are a pack of gum, but they're disguised. I wrapped them all in different boxes and different, you know, weights. I put rocks in some. So it's a big mystery. And so when somebody wins the bingo game, they get to pick a prize. At the end of all the bingo rounds, and we're going to do like 20 different rounds. I got a lot of different prizes. <laughs> I'm going to grab that one to put in the mix as well. You know, and some of them can be bigger. Again, 
depending on your budget and what you want to do. So then you could do trading before they're unwrapped. You, people can trade back and forth. That can sometimes cause some hurt feelings though. If you get the wrapped, you know, $10 bill yeah. <laughs> um, and then you go around and unwrap the, the presents. But I tell you, my kids have been talking about this nonstop for the past week, you know, the Thanksgiving day bingo. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, I think it's these memories that they'll remember as a child. And then in years and, uh, down the road when they're older and have their own kids yep. i'll still be doing the thanksgiving uh -huh. bingo. we'll just have more people and more prizes yep. in the future what about you bob well one of our traditions is uh like yours jeff is we go around the table but everybody gets well at first before there was a large population sample at our house everybody got five kernels of corn but now they get three because that takes less time than five <laughs> but they go around and they name three things that they're thankful for. Uh, and we go around the table and do that. And uh, depending on how many people we've got at the house uh, from year to year, it, you sit there and think, boy, that breast meat is drying out. Mm -hmm. That breast meat is drying out. <laughs> but this year we trust that because it'll be just our little nuclear family there, uh, it should go fairly quickly. and. Uh, uh, and that's one of the really good things because it, it helps us to stay focused on what the holiday really means and, and how grateful we need to be to, uh, for everything that we have been blessed with. So that's, uh, that's one of our big traditions. And uh, so that's what we do. So. It's nice to take that moment, though, you know, no matter if the food's getting cold, you can reheat it, right? But to let everyone, especially the younger kids, I think it's so sweet and innocent sometimes to hear what they're thankful for in their lives. So I'm glad so many families gather and do that as a tradition each Thanksgiving day. Okay, let's get back to some more viewer questions and comments. Let's see here. We'd be interested so, to, to see what you folks are thankful for this year. In 2020, it's a, an excellent suggestion to kind of count our blessings since uh, we've had plenty of counting of our troubles. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, we, we talked about the pies, but other Thanksgiving Day desserts. It's always my favorite. <laughs> the yeah. dessert table, right? Of course, pumpkin sure. and pecan pie are very traditional. Mm -hmm. I love to make uh, pumpkin chocolate chip bread, sweet Ooh. bread. Ooh, That's yeah. always good. In fact, I have, I think it's the world's best recipe on my Facebook page. If you're looking for a really, really good, easy pumpkin chocolate chip bread, you don't even have to put the chocolate chips in. You can find it on my Facebook page. Scroll back several posts and it's there. I'm trying to think what else I do. Oh, oftentimes we'll make uh, sugar cookies in the shape of turkeys and then have mm -hmm. the kids decorate the turkey. That's, That's always fun. fun. Yeah. We got uh, raspberry cream pie this year, lemon meringue pie mm. this chocolate. year. You have to and chocolate. Chocolate silk. There you pie go. This year. And those will probably be gone before the turkey is. So. <laughs> Well, life's short, you know. Yeah, it is. You got to eat dessert first. Right. Electa Ann Hatch is saying, what about mashed potatoes? Mm -hmm. Do you like your mashed potatoes lumpy? Do you like them creamy? Do you like them seasoned? What do you think, Jeff? There's several ways yeah. people can get their mashed potatoes. There make are. Them so at, at my house, at, my dad's a mashed potato guy. But if I'm doing the mashed potatoes, I love to use Yukon gold potatoes. The nice thing about those are that you can just throw them in the oil. If you oil, you can throw them in the water. You could fry them too. You could throw throw them in the water uh, without peeling them, which I love. So you just throw them in there, get the get the water boiling, and then you just mash them with the skins on. Uh, the key to great mashed potatoes is lots of cream, lots of butter, lots of salt. So if you've got lots of those three things in there, you can't really go wrong with potatoes. Um, in fact. I think a good a rule of thumb, I usually go with our, um, so for five pounds of potatoes, I think I go a quart of cream and a stick of butter for every five pounds. So you're using real yeah, heavy cream? Yeah, I use real heavy cream for okay. sure. 
my dad likes to use canned milk. I'm always like, Dad, why don't we just try for some heavy cream? But he doesn't. Ever, right. He does it the way he does it. Uh, I, I put in sour cream, a uh, stick of butter, at least one stick of butter, if not more than that. I put a lot of salt in. I put garlic in, mm. garlic powder, or even garlic uh, minced garlic, and uh, and and then stir that thing really, really good. We usually make a big pot of it about this big. So. Oh, wow. Uh, you need more than one stick that, of butter. That, yeah, more than yeah. One. Well, yeah, two or three. However, yeah, I, I do the whole thing by by ear, I guess, or, you know, by taste. By taste? And, uh, Hopefully not by ear. Yeah, you can't taste much in my ear, but... Uh, hey, just one really quickly, one tip for mashed potatoes is to uh, make sure to warm your milk and your butter, and if you're going to put garlic in there, warm them first so don't put cold milk into your hot potatoes um, or cold cream because the the starches will seize and your potatoes the texture will be a little bit more gummy i guess is the, the right word but so go ahead and make sure to to warm that butter and milk before adding to your hot potatoes we all turn into paul and yeah. dean this time of year with the butter right <laughs> more butter oh my god doesn't taste right more butter yeah <laughs> Uh, Rich Cottle says that he loves his bourbon pecan pie. And then Ellen Fox says, my homemade carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. Those both sound good. Shoot me dead now. Marianne Tucker enjoys being with her family. And then also banana cream pie. Mm. Yeah, that's another good one. Mike Larson says, that explains why I get gummy potatoes. Yeah, that's probably it. So, well, there you go. Mike has been a good uh, Facebook friend all the way through this uh, experience here tonight. <laughs> Mike Larson, there he comes again. He goes, bro, Chef Jeff, you just helped my entire life. <laughs> well, I'm happy to help you, Mike. Mike, you need to get out more, really. <laughs> Love, Love you, buddy, you. but, you know. That's awesome, Mike. Really good, really good mashed potatoes can change your life, I, I'm saying right now. So I'm on his side. If you're going to whip your um, sweet potatoes or yams, yes. do you do it the same way as same the way, mashed yeah. potatoes with the pecan golds? Yeah, for sure. Um, I for, If you're going to do yams, make sure to peel those because the skins on yams, you don't want to eat those. They're not good. But um, I think that, that whipping your uh, sweet potatoes is a great idea. Same thing, buttercream, but then add things like brown sugar and cinnamon and nutmeg in there. Don't say marshmallows. <laughs> and, Are you going to say marshmallows? Mar maybe marshmallow cream would be really good. You know, the, the, <laughs> the stuff you buy in the tubs, the marshmallow whips. My oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be good, but That's I the love thing. They're right? sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows on top. Oh, absolutely. Right? For sure. Okay. Or, Oh, go ahead. I was oh, no, say, no, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, or whip your mashed potatoes or your sweet potatoes, put them in a pan, and then put the marshmallows on top. I guess. I think marshmallows would just make it a little bit more sweet. I just like butter and a little brown sugar, though. There you go. That's really good. Now, Jeff, before we uh, wind up here, talk about timing here. If you've got you know, a normal size stovetop mm -hmm. and you've got one oven, which many uh, homes have only one oven, how do you time everything to make sure it's all ready at the same time when everybody's hungry? You know what? If you've got things like warmers or maybe even a crock pot or, or like a, uh, an instant pot, a pressure cooker, have put, set, make your mashed potatoes early and put them in there on warm. And they can sit for an hour or two just waiting for you. Um, things like that will help your timing. So use your crock pot and keep it on warm. Put your gravy in there or put your whatever, just uh, keeping things warm because you, uh, with turkeys, you just never know, you know, it could, it could throw your whole timing off. But if you do stuff early and then hold it warm, then your timing is all going to work out good. Uh, even, even the oven, turning it on warm and holding something, is a good idea. So. I think that's the biggest obstacle for any chef, getting everything so it's done at the, at, right at the same time, or, you know, some things are going to be cold mm -hmm. when the other things are coming out. And that, then, that's tough to coordinate. And especially at Thanksgiving, there's like six different items you have. And so you really have to think about it and plan ahead, plan for things like keeping things warm, have those things ready. Um, and you will be successful. Once you have your meal and everyone's stuffed, if you're lucky enough to have any leftovers, I know you want to get those in the fridge pretty quickly. How long can they stay in the fridge? I know turkey doesn't really have that long of a leftover life. 
No, I would say it, leftovers keep anywhere from three to seven days, seven being the max. I wouldn't let it go any longer than that. Um, but I would say anywhere between three and seven days. Make sure to cool stuff off fast, immediately put it in the fridge uncovered uh, so that they can cool off fast. Again, we're trying to, to get stuff out of the warm area into the cold uh, to, to reduce the chances of getting sick. So uh, get those leftovers in the fridge early and uncovered so that they can cool down fast and they're good for up to seven days, I'd say. Well, I'll tell you what, I having not eaten dinner yet, just talking for the past half hour, I, my stomach thinks my throat's been cut. So. I haven't eaten yet either. This is, oh, this well, is hard for me. Yeah. Kelly, you're, you're, you're muted there. Thank you. Sorry about that. That was fun chatting, though, about all the food. Yeah. Worked up your appetite. And yeah, I got everyone thinking about Thursday, no matter how you're celebrating um, and who you're celebrating with. I know some of you may have to say a virtual thank, happy Thanksgiving to many of your friends and family, but we sure wish yours to be a, a safe and happy one. I feel like we were just talking about Thanksgiving not too long ago, and here we are a full year later. Yeah, it, it has been a wonderful uh opportunity to talk about all this food but as we uh, bid you farewell for this evening uh, let's remember that uh, even though we've had some huge challenges this year we have an awful lot to be grateful for and i think we would be very wise to uh, remind everybody in our households that uh, despite whatever challenges we may be facing life is much better uh, when we're grateful so if we can keep that in mind and, and then make a huge meal and stuff ourselves, we're going to have a happy thing. Well said, Bob. <laughs> Thank you for that. Hey, Jeff, hope yes. you get a, break, a little bit of a break on Thanksgiving Day. I hope so. It's going to happen <laughs> probably not till 8 or 9 o'clock at night, but that's It's okay. hard when you're the chef of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for that. 155, take it out. Let that bird sit for 30 minutes. Get it up to 165. Yeah. And I may cook it upside down to see if Do it turns that, out yeah. easy this year. Okay. All right. As long as you hit that temperature range, you're going to be good to go. Any method. Fantastic. Awesome. We'll repost this video. We'll live forever on the Fox 13 Facebook page. So if you missed any of the tips or you want to go back and rehear them, you can do that. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thank now go you. with you guys. Yeah. And hope to see everyone tonight on Fox 13 News at 9. We'll be there. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving. bon appetit. Bon yeah, appetit. tell your family happy Thanksgiving, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.